as we gather into the sanctuary. Good morning, Macedonia. And to our friends and loved ones and well-wishers who come on this another day that the Lord has made, we say good morning to each of you, and we give God all honor, we give him glory, and we give him praise. For our God is great, and he's greatly to be praised. We're thankful for the love of Jesus Christ in that he gave his life that we may have everlasting life. We're thankful for the gift of the Holy Spirit which lead, guides, and directs us to the offices of this great church in the absence of Sister Curry, uh, who should be on her way and to, uh, uh, don't tell I said that, uh, to this very fine choir and to our friends who come again. We're just happy and we're thankful to God for this opportunity he's given us to come together to worship him in spirit and in truth. For truly God is able and God truly, truly has been good to each and every one of us. We're going to ask our youth department if they would come at this time that they may lead us uh, in worship on this morning. Give them a hand as they come in their own way. Good morning. Uh, I am Corey and these guys are Caleb, Malachi, and Jaquan. We are leading a devotion for this morning and we need your help to make, make it pleasing to God. We are going to begin with this little light of mine. comes from Ephesians chapter 4 verse 2 all right. with all lowliness and meekness with long suffering for bearing one another in love God has us need to begin prayer Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you've done for us. Thank you for waking us up this morning to see another day and come to church to hear the powerful word from Pastor Curry. And please help those who have breast cancer and help those to fight and win. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Being a Christian is like being a pumpkin. God picks you from the patch, brings you in, and washes off all the dirt. Then he cuts the top and scoops out all the yucky stuff. He removes, <coughs> he removes the seeds of doubt, hate, and greed. Last, he carves you a new smiling face and puts 
to light inside of you to shine for all the world to see. As we conclude the devotion, please stand for the singing of morning, the morning hymn. Amen. Amen. Give him a hand, y'all. Give him a hand.
me if these are your keys. Our announcements for today are as follows. The Tennessee Breast and Cervical Screening Program. Are you uninsured, 40 or older, have limited income, worried about symptoms? You may be eligible for free cancer screening at your local health department. These brochures have been placed on the welcome desk, so please stop by and pick up one. The 2018 All Northwest Junior and High School Honor Choir, Choir Trials were held on yesterday at the University School of Jackson. Ms. Alexandria Carney was chosen as 12th Chair First Soprano. Would you please stand? And Malachi Chavis was chosen as 20th Chair First Tenor. Both are seventh grade students attending Northeast Middle School, where they are both members of the Honor Choir. Call Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church for free transportation to vote. During early voting for Madison County, transportation will be provided on October the 29th and November the 1st from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. Please call the church office to schedule pickup date and time. Have your photo, photo ID at time of pickup. Also, we will provide free transportation on election day. First, you need to call the election commission office to find out your voting precinct. Then call the church location for a transportation pickup time. Again, have your photo ID at time of pickup. Young at Heart will meet this Thursday, November the 1st, from 12 to 2 p.m. This will be potluck, so all senior saints, 55 and above, please come join us and bring your favorite dish. The new member orientation class will be held on Saturday, November the 10th from 10 a.m. to 12. If you, are, if you are to attend this class, someone will be contacting you soon. Pastor Curry would like to meet briefly with the head of all auxiliaries and ministries after morning service. Men, if you are able to lift and move tables, please meet the trustee ministry here tomorrow at 6 p.m. We are in need of your assistance. On November the 7th, Wednesday night, spiritual enrichment classes has been canceled. Today is our Pink Out Sunday, and we will be honoring our breast cancer survivors and those that have gone on due to this disease. Immediately after morning worship, we will gather for the balloon release in honor and memory of our loved ones. Get ready. It is that time of year again. Our annual fall festival will be held here in the Harold Brock Gymnasium and Wellness Center on Wednesday, October the 31st from 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Don't forget to bring your candy for our trunk or treat. The theme this year is Christian Superheroes. The Browns Creek District Association, Congress of Christian Education, convenes November the 5th through the 8th at New St. Luke Missionary Baptist Church. There will be classes for all ages, including children ages 5 through 8, 9 through 12, and 13 through 17. You must attend at least three nights to get certified in your class. Now we have an additional announcement from Sister Barbara Pruitt. Okay, she must be in the room. Okay, on today, 
as soon as the balloon release has been concluded, there will be a reception for um, the survivors so you can meet us in the gym. And also on today, we will be celebrating our first lady's birthday on today. Her birthday is not until Wednesday the 31st, but we're going to do a reception today in her honor. So everyone, please come out and join us in the gym. Will all of our first time visitors please stand? All of our first time visitors please stand. Amen. Amen. On behalf of our pastor, Reverend Reginald Curry and First Lady Sharon and the entire Macedonia church family, I would like to welcome you to our services on this morning. We are so excited that God led you to worship with us on today. And if you're looking for a church home, please prayerfully consider Macedonia for your place of worship. Thank you, and please do come again. Amen. Uh, thank you, Sister Thompson. Um, I ask that you would please, sir, please, ma'am, govern yourself according to the announcements. <laughs> Honey, I didn't have anything to do with that. I just want you to know I didn't have anything to do with that, but... Uh, for those of you today who may be celebrating a birthday from October the 28th to November the 3rd, if you're here, would you stand? Oh, wow. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, my friend. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, wow. A lot of, lot of, lot of this week. We say to each of you, again, what a blessing it is that the Lord allows you to see another year of your birth. And so we celebrate with you and we tell each of you, happy birthday. And may the Lord allow you to see many, many more. Uh, don't forget, um, again, early voting is still in uh, process. And so uh, this week is the last week. November the 1st is the last day. Um, just to let you know, Macedonia, uh, uh, Mr. Richard Donnell uh, sent kudos out to uh, you today for uh, uh, participating in providing transportation for those who um, may not have a ride to the polls. And so he wanted me to let you know that he really, really admires uh, and appreciates uh, us uh, reaching out to help those who may not have transportation to have transportation to the polls. And so, again, pass the word along. If anyone does need transportation, uh, they would call the offices tomorrow uh, from 10 to 2 and Thursday from, or in between tomorrow and Thursday from 10 to 2. Uh, certainly, we would love to uh, be able to accommodate you. And again, the buses will run tomorrow and they will run on Thursday. And then they also will run on election day uh, to take you to your various polls. And so, you know, as the Lord has blessed us, uh, I think we should be a blessing to others. And that's one way that we can be a blessing to others by helping them, helping them to get out to the polls. If you have not voted, early voted, uh, and you'd like to early vote, please do. Uh, again, uh, Thursday is the last day for early voting. So we just encourage you to early vote. If not, be prepared to vote on election day. Uh, don't forget about the Browns Creek District Congress again, just to reiterate it. Uh, if you have not pre-registered, uh, today is the last day to pre-register. And so uh, if you would like to register today, Miss Rose Anderson will uh, be set up in the fellowship hall to pre-register you uh, for the District Congress. Again, we strongly recommend that you pre-register. And if you have the mindset that you possibly would want to go, go ahead and register anyways. If something comes up where you can't make it, that is all right, but if you just have the mindset that you really want to participate, please go ahead and register, pre-register, because pre-registration just gives us a better idea of who will serve and how many will serve. And so uh, I just encourage each of you that have the desire to be a part of the Congress on, on the week after next, uh, no, next week, uh, if you would please pre-register today before you leave. Uh, again, head of all auxiliaries, if you would meet me to my far left just for about five minutes as they're going out to prepare, uh, I just need about five minutes uh, uh, to share with you uh, some information uh, that's going to be relevant to new member orientation because uh, we are excited about it. We've got, very, got quite a few that uh, need to go through new member orientation. And so if you're here today and you have not gone through, uh, you should be receiving a letter this week 
Uh, and then you should also receive a phone call with other information preparing you for new member orientation, which is on November the 10th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. And so uh, during that time, we will introduce you to various ministries and kind of get you acclimated to some of the things that are going on here at Macedonia. Certainly, thank you for our guests, the daughters of the Sphinx that are here today. Thank you so much for the Shriners who are here today. We thank you so much for coming and being with us on this morning. We're truly happy to have you here to worship with us on this day. Uh, with that being said, we're going to ask the officers if they would prepare their hearts to receive the offering. For We thank God for allowing us this privilege in which he's given us to be able to worship him in giving. And the Bible does not lie. Uh, he says, if you give. He says, and give from your heart. He says, it shall be given back to you in good measure. And I just believe, God, uh, that if he said it, I believe it's true. And so we come to give unto God a portion of that which he's given unto us, believing that God will continue to bless us with the opportunity to give. So with that being said, if you are prepared to give, let us bow and give thanks for these gifts in advance. Father God, we come before you now to thank you for allowing us to have this privilege to worship you in our giving. Our prayer is that those who are about to give would not suffer in their giving, but because of their obedience. And according to your word, I pray, O oh God, that you will richly bless them for worshiping in giving. Lord, I pray now, O oh God, that that which is about to be received, that it be used for the purpose in which it is given, that it may continue to edify the body of Christ. Thank you for the gift. Thank you for the giver. Lord, these blessings we ask in Jesus' name, and we give thanks. Amen.
Amen. Give this choir a great round of applause. Let me say to Sister Moore, it's so good to have you, and we're so glad to have you here with us, and we're just grateful and thankful to God for you being here with us, and certainly we are just happy and thanking God for this opportunity that's been given. And Terrence, we thank you so much for just being so accommodating and loving. We appreciate all the work that you've done, and, and we, just, we just thank God for you, man. We love you, uh, and we, we, we bless God, and we thank God for you. And so this, is, this has been wonderful. You know, I, uh, I'm going to move on, but, you know, I, I, I saw something long before it happened, and yet, you know, everything happens for a reason. And, you know, I, my dreams and desires has nothing to do with God's plan. What I want doesn't really matter. Right. Uh, but, you know, I know God. Uh, one thing I do know about God is that God takes care of his own. And so I'm thankful and grateful to God in that whatever the situation, God takes care of his own. And so we're grateful and thankful. It's been a this and these children have blessed us. Did not they sing from their hearts? Amen. Amen. I see two or three that got it, but come on and thank God for these young people who really sung, and it takes work, and uh, we're thankful and grateful to you parents for bringing them, and uh, parents, let me say to you, thank you for bringing them. I saw something today that I prayed about as well. Uh, this, is, this is not a children's choir. This is a really a young adult's choir. And, and I see some young adults back there, but I see some young adults out there. And those of you who are out there, I just pray that you'll migrate up here uh, because you help, the, you help the younger ones as they grow up. Uh, you help mature their voice. And so I just pray. Uh, and that's what you do. You pray and, 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 and you plant and uh, you water and, and God will do the increase. And so uh, we're going to continue to sow the seed and so we're grateful and thankful there's a word today that we want to share with you very briefly for truly in these days and time uh, we need to hear a word from the lord the hebrew writer the hebrew writer writes in 12th chapter um, first three verses of that same said chapter hebrews chapter 12 From the original King James Version of the Bible, the Hebrew writer writes these words, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Thank you. I want to use for a thought this morning as the Spirit allows. I've seen him do it. I want to use for a thought this morning. I've, I've seen him do it. Somebody here this morning can reaffirm. The text this morning can reaffirm the idea that what God is able to do is unquestionable, for he can do what no other power can do. And in fact, you, you, really, you, really, you really don't need a cheerleader. Uh, some of you came this morning, needed a little poking and prodding for you to clap your hand or even open up your mouth and say amen, but 
There are a few people in here this morning that know without a shadow of a doubt that it wasn't your alarm clock. I wish I had some folk that came to have church this morning that woke you up this morning, but, but it was God's grace and his mercy that looked beyond all of your faults and saw your need and allowed you this privilege. I know it's some folk in here know that God is able and there's nobody like him. You don't need someone to tell you their story because you got a story of your own. And, and if walls could talk, they would have saw you crying in the middle of the night. If walls could talk, they would see you walking the floor all night long. If walls could talk. I wish I had some real folk in here that ain't always had it like you got it now, but you had to go through some things. Listen, if walls could talk, you would share that you've had some good days. I wish I had. You had some hills to climb. You had some weary days. Who am I talking to in this place this morning and some sleepless nights? But out of all your good days and all of your bad days, one thing you won't do, you won't complain because you know who holds your future and somebody know who holds your hand. Can you give God glory today that even though you went through, you didn't go through it by yourself, but he was right there holding. You can't tell me what God won't do. You can't tell me what God can't do. 1987. Daddy was on his way to Owens Corner. Had been working there over 20 years. And in that intersection on Lower Brownville Road, where they turn off to go to Owen Corn, and they had yet to cut down at the crossway. And my daddy darted out and began to go over to turn to go to Owen's Corner and was hit T bone by a van. Almost lost his life. But it was in that accident. <laughs> that he learned he had leukemia. Had he not had the accident, he never would have known that he had leukemia. Nothing happens by accident. Everything happened for a reason. Doctors noticed that there was a blood abnormality and, and, and in the result found out he had leukemia and told him he only had six months to live. Mama prayed. His mother prayed. I prayed, he prayed, and six months turned into six years. You can't tell me what God can't do. I've seen him do it. I've, I've seen him turn some situations around. I, I can remember, I can remember God blessing me with a, with, a, with a pretty good job. And Sharon knew that, and so she hurried up and grabbed me up because she knew I had a pretty good job. Talk to me, somebody. Y'all see I turned this way, right? I ain't no fool. But, 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 but I was blessed to have a good wife. Still blessed, 25 years. I'm going to tell you, the gal's still good to me. Been blessed and had this opportunity, had a good job. You know, started out 401K, had put up good money. And, and, and by the time Malik was born, we decided we wanted to buy a house. And the Lord blessed us with our first home. But, but because, of, because of ignorance, ignorance because of immaturity, not handling my business, I took my 401K and bought the home, and we had lived in the home for quite some time, but, but because of ignorance, because of not handling my business, one day I received a letter that we had to move from that place because I didn't handle my business. See, I'm not ashamed to tell folk where I come from. See, some of y'all, you, you know, you've had it all good all your life. You, you, know, you didn't had all your ducks in a row all your life, but I'm not ashamed to tell you where I came from because it made me better. 
But to look on my son's face and to look on my wife's face, to know that they had to leave from the place that they call home. Worst feeling I ever had in all the days of my life. But the Lord never allowed us to stay with anybody. We left there and had a roof over our head. It may not have been what we wanted. It may not have been what we liked. But, but he put a roof over our head. And when the time was right, I got to make this story short. When the time was right, when I had learned my lesson. Yeah, see, the place where I stay now is twice the size of the place that I lost. Come on, talk to me, somebody. The neighborhood I live in now, I wish I had somebody, is a whole lot better than the neighborhood I lived in then. Listen, you can't tell me what God can't do because I've seen him, I've seen him do it. I, I've seen him turn some things around. I've seen him make things better than what they were. I just come to tell you, you can't tell me what God Not the same where I come from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First house was a frame house. We were beaver board. Now I live in a brick house. You can't tell me what God can't do. Am I preaching in here this morning? So, so the Hebrew writer really tries to remind us this morning. Listen, I know we're going through. And I know we're going to have our troubles. I know we're going to have our ups and downs. We're going to have periods where things are going good. We're going to have some periods where things are going bad. We're going to have some sick days. We're going to have some well days. He says, but don't have amnesia. He says, don't forget. Remember those who went on before you. He said, remember Abraham who by faith offered up his only son as a sacrifice. And because he was willing to offer him up, God provided a ram. He says, don't forget those who died before you. Don't forget about Noah, who had received the commission to build an ark because rain was coming after a while in a place where it had never rained. He says, Build an ark. And by faith, Noah did what God told him to do. And when the time was right, rain did fall. But Noah's family was saved. You can't tell me what God can't do if you do it God's way. He says, don't have amnesia. He said, remember those who died in the faith. So I encourage you this morning, don't, don't give up on your faith. Really, that's all we have in Jesus Christ. Because faith is nothing more than hope. And hope maketh us not ashamed. For if we believe that Jesus died, and somebody here need to know he did die. We believe that he rose again. God, listen, if we believe that he died and rose again, there's nothing that God can't do. Do I have a witness here this morning? He says, if you, if you look back and see how far God has brought you, you don't need anybody to tell you a testimony. You ought to have a testimony of your own. Somebody here today know that God has brought you. Not just some of the way, but he's, he's brought you all the way. He says, and since he's brought you all the way, he says, don't forget where he's brought you from. And since he's brought you. He says, don't lose hope. He says, but understand that you have a race to run. And in this race, this race of faith, you got to realize the higher you go up, the less weight you need. Because the higher you go up with weight on you, the, difficult, the more difficult the climb is going to be. So he says, as I elevate you from faith to faith, he says, you need to realize that there are some things you're going to have to let go. There's something that you love, you, you're going to have to let go if you plan to make it to the other side. Not only that, he said, there's some people you got to let go. Because not only are there some things holding you back, but there are some people who've been holding you back. You know the one you've been rolling with? And look, every time you try to take a step up, they just like a crab, they pull you back. You know anything about crabs in a bucket? One get to the top, and before he get over, one to reach up and pull him back down. 
He says, you need to let go of them crowds because there are some folks in your life keep pulling you, keep pulling. There are some people you got to let go. Not only are there some things, but there are some, there are some, there are some places. You got to let go. You, 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 you know that place that every time you go in, you have a pocket full of money, but then when you come out, you ain't got a dime. He said, those places you need to let Because you're not getting anywhere. It's just pulling you back. Whatever you love according to your flesh. Preach, Reverend Curry. I'm preaching to myself. Whatever you, he says, if you're going to go any further, you got to let something go. If you let them go, he says, you can run the race a whole lot easier. He says, and run the race that's set before, before you. In other words, you can't run my race. My race has some twists and turns. Your race may have some hills and valleys. But however your race, go realize that you can't run my race, I can't run your race, but we all got a race to run. Listen, and if we run it by faith, oh, they used to sing a song, says I'm running this race, and I'm running by faith, and at the finishing line, I'll see his face. If you keep running this race, one of these days, you'll see my Savior's face. Listen, run your race. Text says Jesus is the example. That's why he says we ought to look to Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, which means he started it and he finished it. And so if he started it and he finished it, whatever he's working in your life, you need to know he was the one that started it. And he's going to be one, the one that finishes whatever happens in between. The text says you ought to look to him. Because if he started it, he's able to finish it. I need somebody to go ahead and give glory to God today because you're thinking you're in this alone and you're thinking that you're not going to work this thing out and this thing's not going to work for you. But I come to tell you it's already been worked. Because the text says that he started it and he's already finished it. And in, and in the midst of you're going through, he said, listen, don't get discouraged. Stop looking at the situation. If you really want to make it, stop looking at the situation and start looking at the Savior. Because there's no answers in your situation, but there is an answer in your Savior. I wish I had a witness here. A lot of times we look at the situation and never look at the Savior, and we find ourselves stirring around in the midst of whatever we're going through, not realizing if we look to Jesus. He's the one that's able to get us out of the circle. And, and, and don't you know, as we go around and around in a circle, time keep going. That's why the clock goes around and around. It's an indication that time keep on going. And if you're not careful, time will pass you by. And you're still going around in the same circle. He said, stop going around in a circle, but start looking to the one who's able to help you. Out of your situation. Stop looking at the situation and start looking at, at the Savior. Because many today feel like God is not with them. Because they've been going through this rough time. But just like footprints in the sand. You know the story was told. Y'all know about the story about the footprints in the sand. He says he can remember times in his life. When there were two footprints in the sand. When he got graduated from high school, there were two footprints in the sand. When he went off to college, had a rough time, but there were always two footprints in the sand. But when he had cancer, he looked and noticed that there were only one set of footprints. When he got in remission, he began to question God and said, God, why? Why were you with me in high school? All through high school, you were with me. All through college, you were with me. But when I had cancer, I noticed wasn't but one set of footprints when I was sick and I needed you. I only noticed one set of footprints. Where were you, God, when I was going through? God responded that those one set of footprints weren't your footprints. But they were my footprints because when you couldn't go any further, I carried you. And so while you thought I wasn't with you, I was the one carrying you where you, I wish I had somebody here today to know that you're never alone if you've got God on your side. Who in here know you got God on your side? You're not in this journey alone. 
So the question is, what do you do? You run your race because Jesus became the example. For the Bible says that he endured the cross, yes, yes, suffered the shame. He didn't let the cross stop him from his goal. He knew from the time he was born that he was to die for a sinful nation and get up the third day morning. He knew that when it was all said and done, he was going back to live with the Father. It didn't matter what he had to go through. He knew that ultimately he had to go back to the Father. So the text said that he didn't worry about the cross. He endured the cross. He didn't complain. He didn't fuss. But when they nailed his hands, he, he just looked down and said, Father, forgive them. For they don't know what they're doing. When they pierced him in the side, he, he didn't complain. The Bible says he never said a mumbling word to the folk, but he kept talking to the Father because he knew his ultimate goal was to go back to the Father. He kept looking up to glory and said, Father, into your hand I commend my spirit. Listen, he didn't let anything that was going on at the foot of the cross cause him to miss where his goal was, and that was heaven. And the Bible says that ultimately he endures and he sits at the right hand of the Father. I just come to encourage you this morning, listen, don't give up in the middle of the race, but know that God is always with you. For the Bible says that we need to take inventory of our lives and see where God has brought us from. And there ought to be two or three witnesses in this place this morning that can tell your neighbor the Lord has brought us a mighty, mighty, mighty long way. Bible said we ought to look back over our life and see how he brought us through dangers, seen and unseen, uh, how he lifted us up uh, when we were down. Uh, how he moved us from one degree of grace to the next. Is there anybody can look back over their lives and see how far the Lord has brought you? If you're in this place this morning, can you give our God some glory? Can you give the Lord some praise? If you know he's been good to you, you ought to praise our God. If you know he woke you up this morning, you ought to praise our God. If you know he's able uh, to do exceedingly abundantly uh, above anything we could ever ask or think uh, according to the power that worketh in us. If you're here today, can you give God glory? Can you give God the praise? Uh, for the Bible says uh, that we need to let some stuff go uh, and cling closer to Jesus. Uh, for the Bible said that without faith, uh, it's impossible uh, to please our God. Go back to uh, Hebrews chapter 11 and 6. says, but without faith, it's impossible to, to please God. But keep on reading, for we find out that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. In other words, if you keep praying, if you keep looking up, God will show up. Won't he do it? Have you tried him? Uh, ain't he all right this morning? For the Bible said that every one of us has a race to run. Your race is your race. And my race is my race. But one thing we can't do, we can't give up in the middle of the race. But stay in the race. After a while, by and by. When the morning come, Jesus, Mary's baby, Jesus, my rock in a weary land, Jesus, my ever-present help in the time of trouble, Jesus, he's going to show up, ain't he all right, and somebody here can be a witness when he shows up. He can show out. Ain't the Lord all right? One Friday evening on a hill called Calvary, Jesus died for the sins of the world, locked his head in his shoulders and said, Father, into your hand I commend my spirit. He died for you and for me. 
but I'm so glad that Friday evening wasn't the end of the story. For right early Sunday morning, he got up, looked back at the grave, and said, Grave, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, power is in my hand. Ain't he all right? Shout yeah, if you know he's all right. Shout yeah, if you know he's been good. Shout yeah, oh yeah. I've seen him do it. I've seen him do it. I've seen him do it. I've seen him turning around. I've seen him open doors. I've seen him close doors. And somebody here can be a witness with me today. Encourage your neighbor and let your neighbor know it's going to be all right. If you hold on, encourage your neighbor. Don't be ashamed if you've seen him do it. If you've seen him make a way. If you've seen him open the door. Find you a neighbor and encourage your neighbor. And y'all won't do it. I'll do it myself. Neighbor, hang on in there. It's going to be all right. After a while, by and by, when the morning come, hang on.